patient and work with them. And many of those people go back to work, which is exciting because they want to go back to work. You know, it makes you feel functional when you can work again. And what do you do at USC? At UIC, I do several things. I am part of a faculty that helps to teach medical students. So we teach them how to become physicians. It's called Introduction to Clinical Medicine. And I also have a clinic at the downtown facility of USC where we do acupuncture oh. one morning a week. Yeah, and that's a lot of fun. Hmm. So what are the principal complaints that people come to see you about? Principal complaints would be neck pain, back pain, particularly low back pain hip pain, carpal tunnel, headaches, migraine or tension, headaches, those are the vast majority of headaches. A small number of people have cluster headaches. Then we have patients who are fatigued. They may have had a surgery and they haven't rebounded as well. We have patients, particularly like the breast cancer patients, who are getting their chemotherapy or they've just finished their chemo. They may have some residual nausea. We have patients who have had chronic asthma, respiratory problems, and the acupuncture is useful to help relax them because, you know, anxiety can be a trigger for asthma. So we see people with all sorts of problems. Ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, fibromyalgia is a very common complaint. Many patients have that. Uh, and it's, that's a difficult disease because it waxes and wanes. Some weeks they feel pretty good, some weeks they don't feel as well, so. Chronic fatigue syndrome, what do you mean? Yes, we do. Chronic fatigue, and some of them are on a continuum with fibromyalgia. It just matters what diagnostic tools were used to diagnose them, but we do see chronic fatigue patients, and basically for them, we try to improve their energy levels. We also do neurotransmitter testing to see if they are low in dopamine or epinephrine, serotonin, then they might, a replacement would be useful for them because a sleep disorder is underlying both of those conditions, the chronic fatigue and the fibromyalgia. They don't sleep well. So therefore, when they wake up, they're tired. So then they go through the whole day tired, and so at the night time, they're even more tired. And it's just a, sort of a loop. Uh, if you're old enough and you remember the old um, tapes, you know, they were all reel-to-reels. They just yeah, looped around. Yeah, yeah. So they're just on a very bad loop. And if we can try to break that loop, get them some rest, and then their body can start to heal. Because when you do not have REM sleep, or deep enough sleep, there are factors that your body releases that actually damage you. And they've done studies on that. Uh, so, wouldn't if you don't get enough sleep, like one night or two nights, wouldn't you, wouldn't you just get to the third night? <laughs> you might, but some people have sleep disorders where they just don't go to sleep, or they don't get enough sleep, or they have a physical condition like sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. where they're just not getting enough oxygen because the passages in their um, nose or the back of their throat are not open enough, or they might have a heart condition where their oxygen falls at night, so they're just not getting enough, they're not able to get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. so, so what can you do to help someone sleep? I mean, that's one of the most mystifying problems. Well, through a combination of points, we try to figure out the best acupuncture points to help them. We look for underlying reasons like are they in pain and they may not realize how much pain they're in do they really have neck or back spasm that's interfering with the position of sleep so they're just not falling asleep so we try to look at we look at the patient as a total person and if we need to refer them to a sleep clinic we do if they need to see a pulmonologist or a cardiologist then we send them to that person what are the principal ways your patients frustrate their own Okay, I would say not having a realistic idea of what they can and cannot do, particularly for the people who are in pain, and then for some of the other people, not following an appropriate diet or smoking. Smoking is very bad. Not protecting your skin from the sun, using products on the skin that are just not good for you. So that would be a lot of it. And then sometimes people, they just don't want to. They don't want to do something, they don't want to do PT, they don't want to exercise. But exercise is so important in preventing many of the side effects of aging. 
pain in your joints, difficulty moving, cardiac deconditioning, that's huge. And as people get older and the baby boomer population becomes 60 and older, I think people are going to start to see the effect of that if they haven't been exercising already. How long ago were you diagnosed with breast cancer? I was diagnosed in 1995. And did you get something called a clean bill of health? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it works, but whatever. Well, after a certain period of time, they basically feel that you are cured or in remission. I can't hear remission. Um, those are standard terms that are used. And, you know, every year is just a blessing. It really is. And I think when you've been through an experience like that, it definitely puts a lot of other things in perspective. And how has that affected the way you practice medicine? It has allowed me to understand more how patients feel when someone gives you an extremely unpleasant piece of news. And having lived with pain, I really know firsthand.